In this video, we're going to look at the function of the financial intermediate. And in the first video of this chapter, I mentioned uh, on the financial market, we have two ways to finance, direct finance and indirect finance. So the difference between direct and indirect finance is this financial intermediate. So the process of uh, indirect finance using financial intermediate is called financial intermediation. So this is the primary route of the moving fund from lenders to borrowers. Like I said, sometimes lender and the borrower may not be able to contact with each other directly. So we needed this in financial intermediate rate to help to facilitate this transaction between lender and the borrower. So besides that, you know, financial intermediary play a much more important role than what it is a mission. So first of all, it will be able to lower the transaction costs. So think about if you have extra money and it's sitting there, you will try to find somebody to borrow from you. You're gonna literally to go out and ask her, but do you need money? Do you need money? So obviously it's need the time and the money to find the, uh, the lender uh, be, to match the lender with the borrower. So to have these financial intermediaries such as banks, it saves the time and the money uh, to in carrying out the financial transactions. And uh, second, uh, the benefit to have a financial intermediate is economic scales. Like I said, if you only have $1,000, another people need a $10,000 to start a uh, program. So which means he need to find 10 of you is really tough. So however, it's a different case for the uh, to having the financial in intermediate. So they will be able to use their economic skill to uh, make this transaction very efficient. And also for the financial intermediate, they will be able to very efficiently offer the cyber security because they have expert for the fun, uh, bunch of financial planners to help people to arranging this kind of transaction. So they have the uh, the one of the benefit is economic of scales. And the second, like I said, liquidity services, they will help people to very easily to find the lender and the borrower. And so that is one reason we need a financial in intermediary as lower the transaction costs. And the second reason we need a financial intermediary because it helps to reduce the exposure of the investor to risk. Like I said, uh, if you only have a thousand dollars, if the company who borrowed money filed bankrupt, and instead of all ten thousand dollars coming from you, it is coming from different investors. So each one of you might only lose a thousand dollars. So it is uh, allowed uh, uh, the individual to uh, sharing the loss to allow the people sharing the loss. And also maybe you you deposit a thousand dollars to the bank. The bank can separate a thousand dollars to different investment assets, uh, to treasury bill, to uh, the corporate a project, government project. So they will be able to uh, diversify the risk as well, diversify the risk. So that's why most of um, transaction uh, happening, a financial transaction happening in the, uh, in the United States is go through the financial intermediation, financial intermediaries, financial intermediaries. So uh, as we mentioned, the benefit to having a financial intermediate, the question here is, do you think there is no trouble facing the financial intermediaries? The answer is no. So for the financial intermediaries, so they do facing challenges. So they do facing their challenges. So what are the challenges? So the main challenge they are facing is called asymmetric information. So asymmetric information. So the asymmetric information uh, has two categories. So one is called adverse selection. So adverse selection, it happened before transaction happening. So uh, what, uh, uh, what happened here is uh, the people try to avoid selecting the risky borrower by gathering. Uh, so how can we, what do we mean by the adverse selection? So I want to give you an example. So who is more likely to buy a health insurance? A 25 years old, uh, um, a healthy adult or a cancer patient who haven't uh, mentioned he had cancer. So the answer is very obvious that it's a cancer patient more likely by the health insurance. So they are facing all the financial intermediate. So who, so the borrower, before they borrow the money, they know uh, the, the, the risk they are facing if they start a project, how likely they felt they will be successful. And so who is more likely to borrow money? The one who know also being a financial intermediate, they have no idea. Uh, they have uh, before they do an investigation, they won't be able to know if this borrower will be likely to return the money or not. So 
that is called an average selection. So people who are more likely uh, default uh, uh, fault on their loan are more likely to borrow money. So uh, how can we, uh, how the financial intermediary to avoid this kind of uh, uh, damage created by the asymmetric information. So the bank usually to do is they will try to avoid selecting the risking borrower by gathering information about them. So the uh, financial intermediary will spend a lot of money to do the background check, to look at credit history of the borrower, to determine whether they should uh, lend money to the borrower. So this is the one, um, one danger risk facing the financial intermediaries. The second type of the asymmetric information problem facing the financial intermediary is called moral hazard. So this happened after people borrow the money. So for instance, think about this situation. Uh, why is a one year old rental car usually beat up? So you borrow the money, uh, you, lend, you, <clears throat> you rent a car, and then since it's charged based on how many, uh, uh, based on the day you rent it, so the, uh, the, the, the car, the people rent the car usually drive a lot. That's why when you go to rent a car, a one year brand new car, if you look at mileage, it's already drive a lot, drove a lot. Because as I said, after you, um, after the uh, rental place rent the car out, the only thing they can control is the money they charge to make sure they don't damage the car, but they won't be able to control how many mileage they drove because the, the contract they sign is, uh, the rate is based on the day, uh, based on the days. So that's, it's called moral hazard. So after the transaction happened, after people landing a bar, uh, rent the car, so the rental place have no control on how you use the car. So that is called a moral hazard. So in, how can the financial intermediary to, uh, uh, mitigate this kind of uh, problem? So what they will do is they will ensure the borrower will not engage in an activity that will prevent him or her to repay the loan. So that's why, um, like a big invest, a corp, like corporate even borrow the money from the bank, so the bank will periodically checking on their financial report and checking on their uh, activities, uh, how they are using the funds. So that is the two risky area the financial intermediary is facing, and there the key reason here is the asymmetric information. The borrower or the lender has more information than the uh, financial intermediaries. So that is the financial intermediary's job to clear that uncertainty. And by investigating more information, set up stricter rules.